Hey, so yeah, I really don't know where the time went this year. Getting rid of uh, this year's plants, throwing them in my compost bin. But yeah, this year flew by. One thing that I'm doing with my garden beds this year. So as I'm ripping all my stuff out, I had all my uh, cucumbers in here. So I'm gonna get all the plants and especially these little plastic tags out. I'm gonna do a nice rake and I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of this cover crop on. I got this cover crop from True Leaf Market. Put a link down below, you can go check them out. But yeah, I'm gonna go throw this uh, cover crop on. I did it on a garden box over here, probably about last week. I'll show you how it's looking. As you can see right over here, the cover crop's already starting to pop up here. And I'm just gonna let this sit all winter long. All right, so the cover crop I'm using, it's a mixture. I'm gonna read it from the tag here. So it's a mixture of wheat, peas, it's got some collard forage, it's got some radish, it's got some weird cover, I don't know. It's got some yellow mustard, I'll show you the tag. There you go. So like I said, I'll go ahead and let that cover crop sit in the, on there all winter long. I'm not gonna do anything with it. And then when springtime comes, I'll show you guys what I do, but it's pretty simple. Just gonna go ahead and just cut it down. And I'm just gonna go ahead and till it into the soil. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a handful of this stuff. I'm just gonna throw it here in the garden box. Just throw it down. I'm gonna heat, keep my drip irrigation system in here. What I'll end up doing here, probably in a couple weeks, is I'll go ahead and blow this thing out, this system out with compressed air. I go ahead and crack these guys open so that the air will push the water out. And to be honest with you, these drip irrigations from uh, Carpathen, they're pretty cheap. So worst case, I just gotta replace these emitters. Well, I guess I should have uh, waited to rehook up the irrigation system. I gotta go ahead and rake this stuff in. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the irrigation. Super easy. A little quick connect. Just run the rake down and just rake those uh, seeds in a little bit. That's about it. All right, nothing too crazy. Just rake them down a little bit there. And then those cover crops are gonna be, well, they're gonna do their magic. So what they're gonna do a couple things here. Hopefully my future blackberries are gonna do great here. I'll show you what I'm doing with them. Sorry, I'm gonna get distracted. So my blackberries have like really taken off this year. So I'm gonna do here the spring, the string method right here that I did, epic failure. I have uh, my box are 10 feet long, so I got some two by fours to go straight across. So these guys will sit on top of there. But the blackberries, they've just taken off. And all of these are for next year. All right, so all of my blackberry canes that came up this year, all the new ones are all for next year. So hopefully all of these guys, but what was really cool is they started reaching over here to my my uh, archway so i am just letting them do their business i'm gonna let them work their way through the arch here I'm just gonna just kind of help improvise it hopefully i'll have a nice little blackberry arch here so um the uh golden berries started building some boxes for these guys little support system so we can walk through here but yeah look at these look at this blackberry guy look at right here the shoot coming right off I'm gonna try to work this guy up there. What I do with my blackberries here, so you'll see right here, as our shoots are coming off, to go up. And I'm just gonna let it go that way. So I'm gonna have some come up, go that way. So if we look here, I have my <clears throat> one blackberry right here. Got my other big blackberry cane right in there. So this guy is gonna shoot off and go that way. Come out a little bit, he's gonna go that way. And this guy is gonna shoot up and go that way. And I have these little tiers, so um, I have a couple lines of strings. So one's going to go that way, one's going to go that way, and one's going to go that way. So 
so where were we? We were talking about cover crop. So cover crop is um, gonna help your garden in a multiple different ways. So one of the biggest ways for, for, for me is um, a lot of my soil will crack. I'll show you what I'm talking about. See all the cracking and everything right here? We'll show you a lot of better, better one. Well, maybe not. I had already started uh, ripping up the garden back box over here. But the garden box over here was kind of e eroding and cracking, kind of like looking like the Grand Canyon. Well, cover crops are supposed to help the soil, um, especially with all the rain and the snow and stuff I get here, kind of helps prevent the soil from just going going apart so um the other biggest benefit of it is it returns nutrients back to the soil so the cover crops next year when they come back up some of them might come back up some might just die back by you go ahead and till those into the soil and it helps return nutrients back into the soil you also go to use your compost bins like i got back there right by piper compost is really awesome my opinion, nothing beats compost, but sometimes you just don't have enough compost and anything we can do to our garden to help it out, give it a little, a little extra energy, let's do it. Cover crop, so cheap. I like it. It looks pretty. Uh, looks like you're growing stuff, even though, well, you are, you're not going to harvest it, but it's, uh, it looks better than just having dead dirt there or just vacant dirt. So I'm going to get my cover crop going. Yeah, I got my boxes here for my berries here. My berries were kind of just going whoom, way to the side. So I got my box right there. I'm already zoomed out pretty far. But I got my boxes right there. When I say my boxes, I'm just going kind of, it's more of a rectangle. I got my rectangle there. Then I can do the same thing right there for that, for that berry. These are a bunch of my golden raspberries. We got so many this year. So much this year, so pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, like I said at the beginning, man, the time flew by. Getting ready to tear down the garden right now. And uh, doing my cover crop this year. Using my seeds from True Leaf Market. Good seeds. I like those guys. Organic. None of that BS in there. So, huh, I had a bunch of cucumbers growing here, a little cucumber flower. Pretty cool. Sorry, some things kind of just uh, amaze me on how they grow. But tomatoes did do really good this year. Really big failure though with the line here. Got to have wood going straight across here. So, um, <laughs> other things that... I didn't do good in the garden this year, which kind of was a bummer, is my Brussels sprouts. I had really, really bad luck with Brussels sprouts this last year. So, kind of debating if we're going to grow them again next year. But you know what? Something that did take over the garden is my yellow squash here. I ended up planting this guy late in the game. We've harvested so much. Oh, here's one right there. But I was at the store, um, clearance. I planted two yellow squash plants right here. The plants were a dollar a piece. I kid you not, we probably got at least 20 squashes from that. <clears throat> that is an amazing ROI. That's what I gotta tell you right there. It also blew us, amount, blew us away this year. Where are peppers? Mostly are green peppers. We've had a lot of issues with peppers over the year. We were just so blown away on how good the peppers did. I mean, we had so many. For once, I didn't know what to do them all with them all. I couldn't eat them fast enough. So, got some lettuce growing here. I planted a little, couple more lettuce seeds. And then one thing that I'm getting ready to... Uh, to start rebuilding. That's right, the hoop house. Both, most of you know that my hoop house 
got destroyed a couple months ago from a storm and I've learned a lot. And the biggest issue was right here at the end, this top area was not being supported. So I was like, well, why not? Why am I not doing it that way? So I got my two by fours going up here. Just gotta go ahead and screw that um, a PVC into it. Just gonna put a support in between there. I'll put another support in between there and I'll have a nice little window right there. I just gotta get my other arch right there and go ahead and get my plastic ordered. And then, well, I can start growing in here. What am I gonna grow in here? Well, um, I'm gonna probably throw some of the beans, some of the, sorry, the peas. I got some peas over there that are taking their time. And I think probably in about three weeks here, we're gonna have our first frost. I don't have that much time left. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and get those peas here in the hoop house. The hoop house will actually uh, protect my plants from that first frost we get. Uh, what it doesn't protect me is from the heavy freeze. So I should be able to grow through the end of November inside here in the hoop house, here in uh, zone 5B. I'm in Southern Wisconsin for you who don't know where I'm at. Um, so I should be able to grow until, yeah, November. And then I can pick back up growing here in March. There's no way I'm going to do that outside of the hoop house. And I had a huge, huge head start on things this last year. Um, I was harvesting things way before inside my hoop house. Uh, I really want to get this back up. Uh, really debating if I wanted to do it again because it does cost so much money. Um, and really, I mean, to be honest with you guys, I'm the, I don't make anything off of it. Um, I mean, this will be the third time I've redone my hoop house. Uh, the only reason why it's the third time is because this, was it this year? Yeah. Um, this year I made it bigger. So I went from eight by eight to eight by 16. So I had to make it bigger. Um, so, you know, it's really, I would say the first redo from a failure. I just wanted it bigger last time. So, um, I just do it for the fun. Uh, and to teach you guys all too, or help you guys, sorry, help you guys out. Um, cause you know, it all goes back to my mission on helping people grow the food that they eat. Uh, really again, that's the only reason why I do this, uh, um, these platforms here, uh, just to help people grow the food they eat. I want people to eat food from their property, food that, uh, does not have chemicals on it. Uh, if you don't know about me, um, Sorry, mid-speech, I saw my dog eating something. People don't know about me. I'm a fully organic garden here. Uh, I don't spray anything. Um, my personal beliefs, you can believe what you want. My personal beliefs is not to spray any chemicals on any of the food you eat. So, 100% um, organic. Um, that just gives me, does give me problems. Look at that cabbage guy right there. Look at those cabbages right there. Check out my bok choy that's annihilated. That's a challenge I have. Learning every day. I let this um, like mustard. Like if I spray this, there's no way I'd just pick this up and eat this. It's like this mustard kale I'm letting that guy grow as a plant for the animals to eat so they don't eat my plants so that's one thing that I do is I find plants that the bugs will go after what I also do is I plant plants that bugs don't like the smell of so bugs don't like the smell of basil I plant basil by myself um, they don't like some herbs, so I plant my herbs within my with my plants. So, so yeah. Sorry, I just went on a massive ramble. Ramble. Um, I know we originally started this video on cover crops, so let's get back to the cover crops here. So, I got my one garden bed right here with the True Leaf Market 
cover crop. I got them all raked in. Perfect. One last thing is I just need to go and get my drip emitter from Carpathin back in place. Yeah, I'm going to leave these. Probably a couple weeks, I'll go out and blow my whole system out with some cram compressed air. I'll show you what I do at that point. Um, done that a few years, a few seasons, and I have no issues with it. I've had a couple drip emitters not make it through the winter time. But again, these drip emitters are so, so inexpensive. Um, I think I got about a hundred of them. I don't know. I mean, I'm really pulling this number out of my butt, but maybe, maybe 20 bucks for a hundred drip emitters. That's really not bad. I mean, at least for me, I understand people have hard times, but, um, but yeah gonna go ahead and leave these guys on there i'm gonna leave them cracked a little bit again so that when i blow the air through them any of that excess water will come right out i'm gonna go ahead and rip all of my plants out of here those are my cucumbers i'm gonna get them inside of my compost bin over here one of my two wooden compost bins. I do have that sub pod compost bin. Sorry. Dinner was coming up there. I apologize. I do have my sub pod compost bin. Works amazing. But for my harvest time, they go in, or not my harvest, yeah, my harvest time and I rip those guys out. They go into my wood compost bins. Springtime comes along, I go ahead and turn those guys around. Probably won't have that much dirt in them from next year. I took a lot of dirt out of them this year. So, so yeah. That's what's what's going on right now. Just uh, harvesting what we can so the bugs don't eat them. Got a lot of my tomatoes here. That those bugs are just been annihilating 